Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Oculi Rebus. Uh, this is your host, Mike Ellis. John Solis is our producer, and this is a Yuckfo production. Um, give a quick shout out to Pod Chaser. They were on Twitter talking about making sure that us young podcasters mention them. So uh, I'm mentioning them, but not only am I mentioning them, they have been so gracious to include this podcast, Oculi Rebus, on their uh, on their platform. So give it a go. Give it a shot. Uh, not only that, there's a ton of great stuff on Podchaser. Uh, a couple of interesting things I've seen on there I haven't seen anywhere else. And so I wholeheartedly respect what these guys are trying to do by helping us, the uh, podcasters, get out there. So check out Podchaser. Uh, follow them on Twitter, too. Real cool guys. Uh, we don't want any mice to be dead. If you follow them on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. So this episode, just finished recording the trailer and the preview and I'm kind of dumbfounded. I can't come up with another name for this episode. So we're going to stick with what's this life for? So good job. If you've seen the movie Whiplash, you might know where I'm going with this. Number one, it's a fantastic movie, phenomenal movie. If you haven't seen it, it's, a, just, it's, a, it's outstanding. Um, there's a whole scene in the movie towards the, uh, let's say the latter part of the movie, where they talk about the term good job. Now, I'm not going to paraphrase what the movie does and or doesn't do, but before I saw the movie, I mean, for years, I've always hated the term good job. In every professional career that I've had, everyone races to the term good job. Um, I had my uh, subordinates always say, oh, did I do good? You know, we me to say good job. I'm going to congratulate you for just doing good. Good should never be the outcome. Um, many times in my life, I've I've strived for just good, just good enough, enough to get by. I've done that in my personal relationships with uh, my family and everything, and I, and I hate that I've done that. But who vindicates what you do? I mean, if you really need a good job, obviously, it's everybody outside of yourself. You're giving so much power away when you feel obligated to hunt for that good job. If you need that pat on the back, you're setting yourself up for failure in many aspects of your life, I think. So who vindicates what you do? Is it you or is it somebody else? Is it one of your quote-unquote haters? I think everyone's got them, right? Who's your biggest hater? Do you want a good job from them? Because I think if you get a good job from your hater, it's, uh, for lack of better words, it's it's to be disrespectful. But yet we look for good jobs from other people, other people in power, our bosses, our loved ones and everything. Uh, Good job sucks. Good job's not good enough. Um, How humble are you in your hustle? I saw that in my wife's office today. uh, Before I came up to the 13th floor to have this one-sided conversation with myself about doing good jobs. Now, do you confess your drive And, uh, or excuse me, not confess. You confuse your drive and outcome with other factors. Like, why are you doing what you're doing? Is this a goal that you have? Is this a mundane mundane task that you have to do within your everyday life? Are you confusing your drive and outcome because you just want that good job? So we're not going to, we're going to look at resiliency, but we're not going to be looking at um, how to be resilient. That's another episode. That's a longer episode. This isn't about bouncing back, but how you should not be down to begin with. I think that realistically, good jobs in a nutshell are for, comp- are for compromising. We compromise ourselves just because we want that good job. So let's look at a couple interesting stories. I've recently found myself on the better end of a terrible accident um, that has left me in a pretty shitty position, or so many would think. I think it's an opportunity for growth and um, a lot of new accomplishments. As I say, perspective is a hell of a drug, and I believe that I'm on this different end of this challenging moment in my life, and perspective has been amazing. I've been in a position where I spent multiple months, several months in a hospital for rehabilitation for a uh, pretty bad back injury, relearning how to walk, relearning how to use my 
my left hand that I severely damaged in the accident. Just learning how to be quote unquote normal. I don't mean that in a disrespectful way at all. There's nothing wrong with uh, having a paralysis or anything of the nature, but everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people look down on it. The moment I hit that, that ground, if you will, it wasn't even a bounce back. I hit the ground and I fucking crashed right through it. And as soon as I crashed right through it, I found there was water at the bottom and that water projected me going all the way back up through the hole that I fell through. I never stayed at ground zero when it came to depression or anything of that nature after my accident. I just looked at it as a new fucking challenge. The nurses and doctors said, hey, you'll never be able to walk again. I said, no, I'll have to learn how to tap dance now. Now, tap dancing might not be in my future, but I'm definitely learning how to walk again. I saw many people in the facilities that I was in. Some of them just gave up. I thought that was a shame. I always talk about viewing the world through the eyes of a child. Look at kids when they learn how to walk. They don't fall and stop. Although I totally would get it if they did after going through my own experience. But they get back up. I don't even think it's a level of resiliency. I really don't because I don't think they're bouncing back from failure. They're bouncing back from a certain level of success. And that's what a lot of this has to do with is understanding that you might not be at the bottom. This isn't about being optimistic or pessimistic at all. It's about understanding that your, your pity story really isn't that bad. This is also about understanding that when you're chasing that good job, that's all you'll ever get is a good job. And if you grew up thinking that's all you ever wanted, then I think you're lying to yourself. I really do. So there's been a, a couple of people that have recently come into uh, the story, if you will. One of them is a close relative of mine. Uh, the other one is not a close relative of mine. Matter of fact, that matter of fact, that person lives on the other side of the world in Pakistan. Um, he's an instructor, which I think is beautiful. But I was talking about, you know, is this his end goal? Is this what he wants to do? He said, no, he would like to um, get into making clothing. I think specifically it was jeans, if I'm not mistaken. And it's crazy to me because he's an instructor at a college. He's a professor. That's good enough, right? College professor. A lot of people would think that's a great job. I think it is. Uh, without getting into any kind of bias on the opinion of teachers and their teaching ability. I think it's interesting that a lot of people have probably told him, I didn't ask. I think a lot of people have probably told him, good job. But to him, he's not at a good job yet. He'll never get to a good job. There's always something greater. There's always something more to look at. There's more to, to want in this world. And I think that's the thing of beauty. In a country far away from where I reside on the 13th floor here in the United States of America, where we just celebrated our Independence Day, our podcast, or at least the uh, Instagram account, has found some fans in other countries. And I think that's the thing of beauty. Now let's look at another quick personal story, if you will. My nephew has found himself in a peculiar situation. He's contemplated joining the military and giving up on his education. And so we had a conversation. And I showed him a door that was never closed, but he didn't see it. Now this is a guy, this is a kid, this is a man now, this is a grown adult that I think is remarkable with the life he's had. He didn't, he didn't grow up with much. Neither did I, but I think he grew up with a little bit less in, in some areas. And he's making the best of what he's gotten. And I think he's probably gotten a lot of good jobs in his life. But he never stopped. He kept on going. He kept going because as a, as a child, as an infant, I remember the good jobs that he did get were never good enough for him. He strived to do better. And I think that's the thing of beauty as well. So these really irrelevant stories, one about me and an accident that I was in, one about a person, an individual, a man from Pakistan who's forging his own world in, in two different, two different, vastly different markets, if you will with institutionalized teaching and education, and then 
fashion. That's a person I think that good job will never be good enough. And then my nephew, good job will never be good enough. I think my nephew someday is going to have uh, a master's, maybe a doctorate. He just doesn't see it yet. I do. And it's not me saying that he's a smart guy or he's smarter than anybody else. He just knows good job's not good enough. He's seen what good job is through the people he grew up around, people in his own family, our family, my family. Now, this, this isn't about trying to build you up because I can't build you up. I very well could tear you down, though. That is a, a, an easy thing for me to do. So I know a lot of people might be listening to this episode and be like, God, Mike, you are fucking babbling today. I'm babbling because I'm tired of the bullshit when it comes to good job. Good job doesn't get you a world champion. Good job doesn't make you a CEO of a company. Good job doesn't get you to finish first of your class in, in medical school. Hell, a great job doesn't do that. Not at all. The only job that gets it is your job. That's it. If you think that being successful in life is going to be a bunch of good jobs and that a boy's pat on the backs, you're mistaken. Those things might come with the accolades of living a successful life. And of course, I don't mean successful in the markets of money. I mean, successful in the markets of internal spirituality with yourself. It doesn't take a millionaire to do a, a better than good job. It takes you. It takes that drive. One thing that's interesting is, I think I've mentioned it before on the podcast. The most important part of a tombstone is the dash. That's the story. That's the life that you lived. If you want your dash to be a good job, then continue to appease the simple people that are setting a bar so low so they can give you a pat on the back. Good job. I don't think good job's changed as far as its meaning, but I think it's changed as far as how it's represented. I know that sounds a little convoluted, but it's true. Think about it. When uh, most of us, because I can see the analytics on our ages, when most of us were young kids, we didn't get medals for showing up. We got a good job. I think that's interesting. The value of a good job has changed. That doesn't mean that your personal value of the words good job needs to change. I just think that us as a whole, us as a society, need to stop handing out good jobs like their Tootsie Rolls on Halloween. Yeah, I know. They're, everyone gives them out. It's the most, probably the number one fucking candy in those grab bags. I like Tootsie Rolls. I like Tootsie Rolls more than I like a good job. I can honestly say that I don't think I've ever started an event with the idea of as long as I can get a good job, that is good enough. My, my goal has been to crush the competition in every single aspect. If I can crush the competition and if I have the capability of building them up at the same time, I think that's more important than a good fucking job. When I used to compete in different industries, different professions, when it was said and done, I didn't go over and talk down to the losers. Although, well, sometimes I did, but that was, uh, that was due to their own inability to accept loss. But I would always go over and say, hey, this is what I saw that you did. This is where I think you can get better. What did you notice about me? Just because I won doesn't mean that I won. There's always a harder competition. There's always someone better. I don't think that I'll ever have a profession where I'm considered to be the best in the world. And I think the chiefs of industry, the titans of industry, I don't think they think they're the best at it either. I think it's open to interpretation when it comes to who's the best. But one thing I think the best never does is look for a good fucking job. Good jobs silence creativity. Giving these medals out to all these kids just tells them that was good enough. Good job. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't give kids good jobs because I think that kids need good jobs. 
but I don't think it's the job of competition to tell you you did good enough. If you lose 24 to zero in a peewee football game, you didn't do a good job. The referee and the coach didn't tell you you did a good job. They should say, hey, you, you may have tried or you may not have. I think coaches need to be tough. I think we need to be tough. If a kid needs a good job to make them feel better, it needs to be given in the right way, not in every way. Or we're just building a weaker society, in my opinion. I love to reference the military because I have a fond appreciation of the military. Now, the military is not perfect. And it's flawed, just like anything else is. But when I see the average soldier, and I don't mean those fat ones that I don't think should be wasting my taxpayer money, (laughs) but the ones that get it, they're not out there for good jobs. They're not out there for awards for doing their job. They have a thankless job. They really do. They know that their job is unappreciated by many. They know their job is a job that no other people want. Their job is the easiest job, in my opinion, to give a good job to. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, a good job before you die might be something interesting to hear. Might make you feel better about the decisions you made. But I've talked to some vets. A lot recently, actually. And and war was never a good job. People got hurt. People got injured. People died. Everyone coming back was the closest to a good job they knew. But they all came back broken, scarred, if not physically, emotionally, and mentally. They weren't out there hunting for a good job. They were out there hoping they were better than the person that was shooting at them. A good job can be a lot of luck. They have to, reply, they have to rely on skill, leadership, understanding of the job we've asked them to do. I think any military commander who thinks that a good job is good enough will tell you that they're not ready for war. Let's apply that to our day-to-day lives. If good job is the bare minimum, then we've set it too low. If you've set good job as being the gold standard of Understanding if you found success or not, you're setting the bar too low. But it's funny because I think that with the words outstanding job, or that was phenomenal job. I think that when it comes to all of it. So what's this life for? Is it to appease the masses? Is it to appease a boss or somebody who um, outranks you in, in your job or in your life? Or is this life for you? Is it for your loved ones? Is it for your family? I think it's harder to give yourself a good job than being, than being told you've done a good job. So next time someone tells you, good job, I want you to ask yourself, was that really a good job? Or is that a fucking pity? We have to stay humble when it comes to understanding if we're doing good enough If we're doing good enough, why can't we do better? And that's how you stay humble. Understand that you're not on top of the pyramid. Because if you were, I don't think people would tell you, good job. Your circle would be so small. You'd be looking down on people, probably telling them, good job. Good job because they didn't take your job. Good job because you're doing a better job than them. And you know, good job keeps them in line. Is that what good job is? Is good job just keeping people in line? I don't think so. But I think good job diminishes the greatest thing that we have as individuals, the freedom to get better. Good job hinders you. It always will. Stop looking for a good job and start doing the job that you want, which I promise is more superior than a good job will ever be. Now, I'm not saying don't be happy when you hear a good job. All I'm saying is challenge yourself to understand that you could do better.
These titans of markets don't just do the job they've been doing or they lose it. The great champions of the world when it comes to sports, they train once they become champions. They train for improvement. They don't train for stagnation. Most fields that we find ourselves in, whether it's culinary, where it's automotive, whether it's um, music or military, psycho uh, psychology, uh, medical, any of these things, understand this. You can study your whole life and only scratch the surface of the education. You can study your whole life and barely scratch the surface, but yet good job makes you become stagnant at your work and makes you okay with where you're at. Fuck that. Let's flip the world on its head. Let's do better than good. Let's do better than great. Let's do better than everything else above it. Just do yourself. And just remember that the kid that grew up may want to kick your ass today because you're not representing their heart, their drive, their determination the same way. Well, I can go on and on, but it's time to move on. Mike Ellis, out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, remember, we're on multiple platforms. That pod chaser that we mentioned at the beginning, hell yeah. Follow them on Instagram, or excuse me, on Twitter. I'm pretty sure they got an Instagram too. I'm not following them there. Shame on me, huh? But make sure you give them a, a good like on their tweets. They're doing some really good stuff for a lot of these podcasts out there, including myself. Um, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter at Oculi, at um, O Arebus. And Instagram is Oculi Rebus. You can also look at Mike Ellis and you should be able to find us on just about everything. Uh, we're in the process of looking at revamping our little logo to become a little bit more diverse in a way. Um, but we're still very inclusive here. We just want people that have aggressive thinking. So until next time.